Today we're speaking with guitar player Ethan Brosh. Um, how are you doing today, Ethan? Um, last time we talked to you was about a year ago, and um, you were on tour at the time with um, Ink Faye Malmsteen. How did the tour uh, turn out through you? Um, hey, Jason. Thanks for having me, first of all. And um, yeah, that tour was, it was a real blast. Um, it was something very difficult to do because I just found out about that tour two months before um, we had to go on the road and I had to put a lot of things together. And it was a very intense tour because it was 14,000 miles that we had to travel in five weeks. Wow. Um, so a lot of shows were just like a show every night and then the 10 hours of driving in between them. Um, so it was um, it was really intense and anything that has to do with Inva, of course, is very intense, but I love it, you know? And it was, it was just great. It, it was a real blast. And I guess I, it seems like we got a lot of attention as a result, and it was just so much fun to play through uh, to all these crowds. And I, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't be any happier with the way that it turned out at the end. And let me let me ask you, um, I'm really excited to talk to you today because um, since the last time we talked to another exciting uh, uh, thing you have going on now is. Um, you recently signed with Carmine a Pieces record label, which is um, Rocker Records. Now, how did that come about? Um, that came about through. Um, this, this is a brand new record label, and I think I'm, I might even be the first artist on that record label besides Carmine himself. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, um, that came about through you know uh, management and um, publicist. And um, just, you know, the more time you're in the music business, the more people you start to get to know. So it just, um, it was just really good timing because they just started the label and they were looking for people pretty much like me, I guess. And it was just really good timing. So, I'm, you know, I'm really excited to work with these guys because they seem honest and they seem like really good people and Carmine of course is a legend in the music industry so I'm honored to be on, on his label and to probably be the first one on the label it's a, it's a, a real honor for me. Yeah he's going to ask you about that because um, you know again Carmine's a legendary drummer in his own right and um, a lot of times you know um, like like most people when they heard about this label they'd expect him maybe to goes um you make it a, a label for based around drum type um music whereas um you're you're like a guitar shred type guy and it's kind of interesting that um you're the first one um signed of a label so i gotta ask you um did he sign you just based on hearing um your past music or um you know really how did the deal come about did you have to send um send the label some of your music to hear already uh, knew some someone in the label and um, then the initial contact was created and I sent them the music and it just seemed like the right thing to do um, so it wasn't something like Carmine necessarily wanted drummers on his record yeah 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 record label yes yeah. you know I guess they're just a record label for, you know, it's called Rocker Records. I guess it's for rockers and, you know, to just release any kind of uh, a record that they think is good and makes sense for them. Um, and I'm glad that mine was something that they believed in. And, yeah, you know, I, I feel like, you know, myself personally, I... You know, I I am a guitar player that I, sometimes I play fast, but I I don't really like to categorize myself as a as a shredder with you know a bunch of other guitar players playing the neoclassical style, and you know I want to try and expand to a wider audience. And really, with me, the the main thing is really composition and just composition and songwriting and just having a variety of different songs that really sound different from one another and happens to be instrumental in this case. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but, you know, it's just like a lot of the tunes are basically instrumental songs that have sections that make sense, intro, verse, chorus, bridge, stuff like that, and then, yeah, there is a guitar solo, and some of the things are technically challenging, but it's not... Um, it's not shredding for the sake of shredding, you know 
I hear you. Yeah, uh, for, forgive me for um, kind of labeling you as that, but... Um, oh, no, no, no worries, no worries. You know, I'll, you know, it, I got it. Uh, I, this is the term in the industry, yeah. which is totally cool. Yeah, well, you know, we got part of it says educating people because, because again, um, I think you know, um, uh, you know, guitar heroes is kind of a lost breed, and that's what's great about guys like you that still put out this type of music. Because, again, when I listen to your stuff, it's kind of like you're saying it, it's um, it's not just playing for the pure, um, pure uh, fact of showing how, how fast you can play. You know, um, kind of your music. Uh, you know what you do. You do everything to you know so it fits the song, if you know what I mean, and. And, you know, you got a style of playing where I put you right up there with the guys like, you know, uh, Joe Satriani and Steve Vai, you know, these are guys that, um, you know, they can shred with the best one, like you say, but, but at the same time, the, uh, their songs do not all sound the same. And that's what's refreshing about a guy like you, I think, you know, in, in this dang age. Yeah, well, thank you. I appreciate that, you know, and I'm trying to just go out there and actually bring it in front of people, you know, in front of audiences, because it seems like um, many players in that style basically just play to an iPod and just do a lot of guitar clinics, and, you know, so that's one, that's another reason why the, the Inva tour was so great, because I really got to be in front of um, pretty decent sized uh, crowds and just played that type of music. And it seemed like the reaction was really, really great. And it just made me think, you know, there are a lot of people out there that want that. They, they want that style of music. And it's just that no one is really giving it to them because there's just not a lot of support behind that style of music. You know, it's just like the general... Um, belief in the industry is that it just, you know, it's instrumental music, it's not commercial, then, you know, it's just like a side project, and no one really wants to support it for real, um, at least not anymore, um, so for me, going on that tour was a huge thing, it was also an eye-opener for me, because it seems like people do want it out there, and I just gotta find a way to keep, you know, being out there, and, and giving it to people. Cause, 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 you know, I got, I got to tell you, um, I got an opportunity to see you open um, for Inkfan on that tour um, in Anaheim, California, here um, last year. And, um, you know, I think, first of all, for anybody to go to see any type of um, instrumental um, performer, you know, you know, it's one thing to put on the record and be able to keep people's attention, but to go to a live concert and where there's, you know, really no vocals in the music, um, be able to impress the audience and keep their attention you know, for that long, you know, you got to be a, a world-class musician, if you know what I mean, so... Yeah, well, thank you so much for saying that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying, it, it's, a very, it's a real challenge in instrumental music, because, um, again, if, if uh, you write music for the sake of shredding and the sake of technique, um, you know, it's just like, after a while, you're going to lose your audience, because it's just it's just technique based and if you're trying to approach it in more of a songwriting um, concept and you just and you write songs that are different from one another you might be able to actually keep their interest for a little bit longer so that's what I'm trying to do and it wasn't something that I planned on doing that way it wasn't my tactic you yeah, know, yeah. Just the, that's how I started writing instrumental songs when I was, you know, a young teenager. Um, and then later on, I kind of understood, well, I guess it makes more sense to actually approach it that way. Because I've gone through periods when I was younger to just try to be very technical and try to be the fastest guitar player in the world. But, you know, I, I realized after a while that, you know, it's probably not the best idea to just have, have that as your goal. And of course, you need to have very, very good chops because it's it's part of um, it's part of being a great guitar player, a great music part of music. Um, but that shouldn't be the that shouldn't be the goal. That's just that's just a part of it. Yeah, just part of a show. And, and now, now let me ask you: the deal with um, Rocker Records is that just for your solo stuff? For because um, I know you're in another another band as well. Um, will, will they be releasing any? Burning Heat, I think, is the name of the band. Is that correct? 
Yep, yep, burning heat. And, and I was um, curious, will uh, Rocker Records be releasing any of the stuff from Burning Heat, or is this just strictly a, for your solo stuff? Um, it is a possibility, but um, we just have to to see how things go. Um, we'll, we'll take one step at a time. We're first dealing with this release. We're going to see how how well it's going to do, and hopefully it will do well, or as well as we think it will. And now, uh, Burning Heat is something that I, you know, I need to work on a, on recording that first album that we've had written for a few years now. Yeah. Um, but I haven't recorded it yet, so we'll take one thing at a time. It, it is a possibility, but, you know, you just never know. Okay, and, um, you know, in, in regards to um, the label, I, I was curious, um, when I was talking to you last year, you were telling me at the time, you know, um, a big expense of uh, part of what you do is um, you were one having to print up all the CDs and and at some of the shows you were running out of um, CDs. So um, has this new record deal um, helped you, you know, in, in that sense that, um, you know, somebody else is printing up the CDs and responsible for that now? thing about being signed to a label like this is the fact that um you know it's owned and operated by uh you know a legendary guy like carmine who you know he can kind of relate to what you do because he's he's in the music business so you know part um part of the reason he's doing this you know he's he um he can relate a lot better to you know um being a musician and getting your you know getting your stuff out there as opposed to a guy you know in a suit who's just about you know um well this isn't selling we're going to drop this um you know, I, I think a yeah. guy like Carmine would really be behind, you know, supporting his artist, being that he's, you know, he's been doing this himself for, you know, many years now. Yeah, it definitely uh, made me trust the label more, just knowing that, absolutely. Yeah, and, and so, um, so um, of course, um, you're with the Rocker Records um, now, um, they're going to really be pushing this latest solo release, which is, like I said, a over a year old, but... Um, have you thought about um, starting to record your next album yet, or is it really trying to push this record still? Of course we're going to try and push this record still, uh, but at the same time, when I do have time, I, I'm i writing new material. So I'm not sure when or how the next record is going to um, be created, but either way, I'm writing some some new instrumentals, I'm writing some songs with vocals, I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to package the whole thing, uh -huh. but it's always good to write music, especially if, um, if you have days that you feel like you're getting some inspiration, you you just uh, you want to take advantage of that. So I started writing a bunch of tunes and I already have um, the bass for, I mean, not bass guitar but I have the, the basics for um, for a bunch of different instrumental tunes that can possibly be on the next record whenever that will happen oh cool and, and let me ask you in regard to these um, tunes you've written that have um, vocals is that something you think you might tackle yourself trying to do a singing or would you bring in a, um, in a lead singer specifically to do that um, I would definitely not sing it myself because uh, I just like yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a good singer. You know, I might be able to sing in tune, but I don't like the way I sing, and yeah. I prefer to really focus on the guitar parts because uh, there are a lot of guitar parts. So, um, I prefer to actually have a lead singer, and I don't know in what shape or form that. 
that's going to take place. I don't know if it's going to be another solo, solo record with guest singers or one guest singer, or uh, I'm not sure. So, but for now, I'm just writing material, and my, pretty much my New Year's resolution was that this year I'll write a full album with uh, with lyrics and another full instrumental record, um, plus be on stage as much as I can to support my new record. Yeah, and of course, um, you just said you're not sure how you're going to do handle the vocal stuff, but I was curious... Um, you know, what do you think about um, other people who have put out albums where they have, you know, like maybe a different singer on each track? Um, you know, how do you think those type of projects usually come out? Um, you know, do you think it'd be better to have just one singer or, um, I mean, look, look like... Um, if you look, I, I typically, yeah, I think that one singer is usually better. Maybe yeah. you can have like a guest or something. Um, really, like, really great singers are very, very hard to come by. Yeah. Probably the hardest thing to come by. Um, yeah, I can actually count um, the singers that I like probably on one hand. Yeah, yeah. You know, Bruce Dickinson, Sebastian Bach, and uh, Michael Starr from Steel Panther. And, wow. You know, maybe a couple of other ones. Uh, other ones. Uh, David Lee Roth. And oh, of course, yeah. Rob Halpert. Um, Those are the legends. They're, yeah. really not, they're really not that many. Yeah. Because to me, you know, like, um, even if you look at the two albums Slash has put out, um, like, a lot of people like the first album, but to me, I kind of like the vibe of the last album because it's, um, cause he's all, got all the same guys on the album now that were in, in his touring band, and so there's kind of more of a band vibe, you know, even though it's a Slash solo album, you, you got the same yeah. guy singing, and I think those kind of projects tend to come out, you know, better, in my opinion, you know. And, um, yeah, no, I, I, I agree with you. And, you know, hopefully if you find the right singer, yeah. I, I like the, the whole concept of a band to start with. Yeah. I think, and I think it's the most successful concept. And I'm not, I'm not crazy about projects. I like yeah. a real band. And even, even my instrumental stuff, my solo stuff, you know, that, that's another thing. I don't really like playing to, to tracks. You know, I might do that at the NAMM show or yeah. clinics here and there, but I really like to take my band on the road. And it's so much more powerful, and it's a lot more fun, too. So, and so let me, it's just yeah. so much more productive. Let me ask you, as far as your band, and um, have you guys had the opportunity to um, do any shows overseas? Have you strictly um, been doing it in the U.S. so far? We haven't done that yet, but this is something that we're definitely considering and you know it's just like there's so much that goes on behind the scenes of course to create yeah something like that um so everything comes in the right time i guess of course and it's, that, that will happen too we're gonna hit europe at some point um but i'm just not sure when it's gonna happen but i know that it definitely will happen yeah i mean it's it's a, it's a slow burn if you will a slow process but um you're, you're definitely one of the guys, you know, that's been on the rise the last few years, and so, um, I, you know, I'm sure I'm sure you're on your way, as they say, but, um, you know, I, I'd, like, I'd like to ask you, too, last time I talked to you, um, I believe you told me you were living in Boston, and I, I think, um, talked to you just a couple of weeks after the Boston um, bomb, bombing, um, things are, um, you know, really different there. I understand you guys won the World Series. What was that like? <laughs> um, yeah, the, uh, you know what? I mean, all these sports thing things are happening here, but um, you know, for me, I'm like I'm like in my music one like into my music 100 percent, and just like I'm, I eat and sleep and breathe music 24 seven. So all these things that are happening, you know, it seems like it's making a lot of people around here happy. But you know, for me, it's like I. I wouldn't even know. <laughs> that's that's you know? that's cool. And, um, and I, I believe you told me last time that um, that you taught at the Berkeley School of Music. Is that something you still do these days? Um, yeah, I do it in the summers. So okay. you know, I just talked to Berkeley yesterday because I'm going to be back there this summer. Yeah. And I was curious, do you ever um, get an opportunity to um, talk much to any of other professors? Because I, I was um, another guy was. Um, interviewing that I found out with um, 
teaches there is um, this guitar player named Joe Stump. Are you aware of who Joe is? Yeah, of course. Joe and I are very good friends, and I actually just talked to him yesterday. We're going to do a show on April 27th together. Oh, that's cool. And um, actually, we were going to play together tomorrow, and that show is not happening now because of some, you know, promoters, BS, wow. the usual stuff that happens in the music business. Uh, but we were going to play a show tomorrow, actually. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Okay. Well, small, small world there. So, um, yeah. now, like, like you said, um, this album has been out a year right now. You got the new deal, and you're really working on pushing that. But I was curious, um, in doing that, or, um, is there any more touring that's going to be um, coming up behind that album, or um, are you going to concentrate? Yes. Okay. There will be, and we're we're looking at the the um, possibilities for that at the moment because oh. you have to look at venues and you have to route the touring and do a lot of work behind that and you have to do it well in advance yeah. and again there are a lot of things that are happening behind the scenes to put together something so big as that even if it's not on a huge scale but still there's a lot of work behind it oh, of and course there are of course of people involved uh, but yes um it's exactly what we're planning and talking about right now so there will be more touring um to they, support the record because yeah. again you know for a lot of hard rock metal fans are into this type of um music you know ethan brosh um especially among guitar players is a name that's you know you're really on, a guy that's on the rise and um and i think even though your album has been um out for over a year you know if you do a little bit more touring you got this new deal i think it's going to push that out you know make more, even more people aware of the album which is um you know, obviously the, um, you know, idea, but let me ask you, in the um, little bit of time that you've had this new deal with Rocker Records, um, have you, has that been kind of what you've been seeing, that, you know, more and more people are becoming aware of the album? Um, it seems like it, you know, um, the, the album was just released last week, yeah. you know, so it's only the oh. first week, it's really hard for me to tell what's going on, uh -huh. I mean, I'm trying to promote it a little bit myself, um, and, you know, we're just starting with the promotion and publicity now, um, oh, cool. to really push the record, so, um, but yeah, I think that people are going to start uh, realizing that album exists pretty soon, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, and are there any plans for a video or anything like that, um, as far as for any of the songs off the album? Yes, absolutely, and there's actually a video that's already done, complete, edited, and ready to go, and it's uh, we're going to release it probably in a few days. Okay, cool, and so um, probably I imagine, like you said, you know, um, summer's right around the corner, so you probably do a lot of teaching, and probably um, that'll give you guys time to get a, a tour booked and st stuff for the fall, that's kind of what the plan is at this point? Something you said well, I was asking, um, you know, summer's right around the corner, and uh, so I imagine the plan is that you'll go back to teaching for the summer, and then uh, that'll give you time to um, do whatever you have to do to get a, a tour booked for maybe the fall. Uh, it, yeah, I think I think you might be right about that. I think that's where it's going, you know, and hopefully I'm going to do a lot of other shows um, until then, uh, throughout uh -huh. the spring and the summer, and they're always there are always things that just show up and but yeah I'm going to do a lot of shows probably in this area and the New England area um, but yeah I'm going to try and stay very active until we actually do some tour dates and, and before I let you go Ethan uh, we've been you know spending the last 20 minutes talking all about you and your new album and your record deal um, I'd like to ask you um, do you have any um, favorite guitar players you know, guys that are coming up on the scene that, that you really admire um, actually, the only guy that I really kind of like that I've noticed, you know, recently is, um, is, uh, Satchel from Steel Panther, actually, like, I'm a huge Steel Panther fan now, and that's the only band that I really like since the 80s, and I think they actually, they have a great guitar player, who's a great songwriter, too, um, and another guy that I think is really good and is kind of underrated is uh, Rob Marcel. Oh, okay, wow, I've heard uh, of him, yeah. Player of uh, Danger Danger. 
Okay. And, you know, he's a great friend, and I think he's a great guy that really knows what to play and when to play it. And um, he's a little underrated, but, you know, he should get probably more than what he's getting. And he's a great guitar player. Um, other than that, I mean, of course, there are a lot of great players that you always notice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't really point out any band or any famous guitar player or any, anyone like that that, you know, I would really... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, the other thing is, I'm not really aware of what's going on. That's the other thing, you know? I, I mean, yeah, that must be kind of um, the thing is, you know, you're all into, um, you don't get a chance to check other people out because you're, you know, into, um, you know, promoting your own career in, in music, which is what it's all about. So once again, Ethan, I'd like to thank you for taking time to do this. I really appreciate it. And um, Thank you so much for having me, and, and I do, I do have, um, you know, software where... Um, I'll be able to send you like a uh, an MP3 file of interview. If you give me a day or two, I can send that to Chip, and he can forward it to you, and you can kind of just okay. listen to this. And it, it is going to be post as far as the audio part. It's going to be posted exactly word for word. Nothing's going to be altered. We don't yeah. we don't believe in that. And um, you give it a listen, and because um, I probably won't get it posted till um, May, because our current issue is going up um, in a few days, and the next issue doesn't go up till May. But um, in, in the meantime, you listen it and. Um, there's anything that you decide, hey, could we leave this out? We could uh, we could fix that for you, okay? Okay, yeah, I don't think there should be anything, you know, that to, like, to take out of there. I don't know. Okay, well, um... Uh, well, is, that, is that a physical magazine or a it's a, it's a it's an on It's an online thing, so like I said, what we do is... Um, like um, I'll go back and type this up later, and it'll kind of be... A, what ends up in the magazine is kind of edited in the sense that... I don't necessarily type it up word for word because it just takes too long. So, but I, I what I put in the magazine will be like kind of the main points, and then we post the audio later on our sister page. I'll, I'll give you guys the links to that just so you can check it out, and um, okay. and people can listen to the audio word for word. And, and I always like to do that. It's kind of you know fun to go back and listen to these interviews. And people yeah. you know, sometimes even when you read, you you miss something. So um, that's always yeah, fun to do. When you when you post the uh, main uh -huh. If you can just keep the words the way you say them, yeah, as yeah. opposed to like edit them and just like kind of sum, sum up what I say, that, that'll be better um, if you don't mind doing that. No, no, not at all. No, I mean, like I said, um, we don't want to, um, you know, I, I like to like hear things too exactly the way they were said and we're not, yeah. into, we're not into putting words in people's mouth, if you know what I mean, just to sell stuff because yeah. we don't make it any money. because it happened to me so many times yeah. where I read my own interview and I'm like, yeah. I said that, I would never say something like that. Yeah, because <laughs> to, to be honest, the only, time, the only time I would ever do anything like as far as editing, maybe changing a word, would be if something was on an audible. And I, I, sometimes I, I'll put like, okay, well, this is what it sounds like he said, but um, I never go to a point of, you know, changing something, you know, just for a point of selling magazines because we honest, don't make a money off um a single dime yeah. off doing this but uh it, so that's the only reason i would do that if something was kind of unaudible i kind of guess what was said but for the most part we don't yeah. we don't change anything gotcha. and that's that's why i like to post the audio too so people can hear word for word what was said oh okay that's what he said so yeah thanks again my and friend the magazine, the magazine is a, a physical magazine no it's uh, a it's a it's an online thing people it's like it's a web page people go and we have different articles um, gotcha. um, Chip can give you the link. He's got it, or, or I'll send, I'll resend it to him, and and you can check it out just so you can kind of get an idea of our um, right. uh, what we put in there. But um, yeah, it's been great talking to Ethan. And anytime you want to do this, um, you got my number. We can do it again, um, or just do it well, through Chip. Um, it's been great talking to you, though. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good talking to you again, Jason. Absolutely. Okay. Well, you take care and good luck with the album. And um, if there's anything Thanks else I can do, let me know. Bye, bye. Alright, we'll be in touch.